We've all turned up to school or to work in our pants, haven't we? Or in our dreams, at least. It's that sort of thing that we all have those very uncomfortable dreams about. But a new study revealed the impact these nightly apparitions have on our decision-making. One in five have been so influenced by a dream, they've made a decision, a life decision, because of it. One in seven have decided to ask someone out because they've thought about it in a dream. Uh, one in ten have quit their job as a result of a dream, which seems uh, it's a little bit ex extreme, doesn't it? Let's talk to dream psychologist Ian Wallace. Good to see you this morning. morning. Talk to you all morning, Ian, about my particular dreams, let uh -huh. me tell you. Um, look, do we know why dreams are so important to us and why we're th they're having an impact on re you know, reality, our waking life? Our dreams are a fundamental form of self-expression. That's when we're truly at ourselves. So when we dream, what we're doing is processing a huge amount of information that we unconsciously absorb during our waking lives. So we use dreams as a sense-making process, and by taking insight from our dreams, then we can use that to make decisions in waking life. There's, a, there's an impact with that, though, isn't there, in the sense that we know we all dream a lot. We don't actually remember a great deal of our dreams. So we're only, if we're making a decision, we're only making a decision about the tiny bit of dream that we remember. It, it varies from person to person. So we spend about two hours per night dreaming. And in that, you'll have five dream episodes. So it's a very, very easy way to remember your dreams. You need to remember three words, will, still, and fill. So tonight, when you go to sleep, as you lay your head on your pillow, say, tonight, I will remember a dream. When you wake up, lie completely still. Don't look at the time, don't wiggle your toes, don't chat to anyone. And then, as you lie there still for a minute, you'll get dream imagery coming back, so you just fill in the gaps and you'll create a dream narrative there. So will, still and fill will help you remember your dreams. Really? Yes. Really oh, cool. cool. <laughs> wow. Well, what do we know about, uh, what, what do recurring dreams tell us about ourselves? They're dreams that we have over and over again and we don't understand them. So those are issues in waking life that are causing us some tension or some confusion that we need to deal with. So when we have a recurring dream, there's some some issue, something that's going on, that we're trying to send ourselves a message. And if we don't pay attention to it, it's like ignoring a ringing telephone, then it'll just keep ringing and ringing until we pay attention to it and start doing something with it. So in that sense then, if what you're saying is right, this idea that people are acting on what they're dreaming, whether it's, I mean, asking someone out is one thing, quitting your job is something a bit more serious, of course. But to me, I read that and thought, oh, they're complete, these people are bonkers, but actually, they're not. Well, not at all. So the most common dream we have is being chased. And being chased is all yes. about a pursuit in waking life. So it's some, rather than something pursuing you, it's something that you're pursuing. And one of the things that we pursue most often in waking life is our career. So by understanding that being chased dream, we can understand the pursuit we want to follow in waking life and make decisions that we're really comfortable and happy with. Can we actually make sense of every dream we can remember? Every dream we can. So anything in there is it's a different language. It's a language of imagery and metaphor. But once we learn to interpret that language, we can make sense of any dream, however ridiculous it seems. Wow. How does that interpretation change? I mean, is, if you were analysing a dream, one of my dreams, uh -huh. <laughs> um, would your interpretation of that be different from, from another dream analyst's? It may be, but because we're all human beings and we have fundamental human dream imagery. So when you dream of your primary school in Newton and Furness, and I dream of my primary school in Kirkcaldy and Fife, they're completely different locations, but they have the same fundamental meaning to us about a primary piece of learning that we need to do. Wow, I find it absolutely fascinating. And is, is that part of the interest for you in the sense that you know you're tapping into something which intrigues every single person in, in, in the world. We all dream, we all want to know quite what it means. We all have those mornings where we think, what on earth was that about? <laughs> yes, it's a universal human language. It's a way that we can all communicate what we really want to do in life, what we really need and what we truly believe. Wow. Just remind us again what Good. we need to do to remember our dreams, because oh, yeah. I never remember Will, mine. still we'll and fill. Will, we'll still and fill. And think, think of that before you go to bed. Yeah, so, think, so as you lay your head on the pillow, say, tonight I will remember a dream, you can also set an intention to have a dream. So you might say, tonight I will dream about a particular person, such as Cheryl Cole or Johnny Depp or David Beckham. And then when you wake up, lie completely still and let the dream come back to you and then just fill in the gaps in the imagery and you'll get a lovely dream narrative emerging. Wow. <laughs> that works. I might let you know tomorrow morning. <laughs> Ian, really, really fascinating to talk Thank to you. you. Thank it's you. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. Thanks.
I am going to tap in for some advice a little bit later on, let me tell you. Uh, stay with us here on Sunrise. Coming up.